Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here. January 1938, Japan. Another busy turn for Japan. Uh, they have $25 and they're going to spread the wealth around here. They're going to do a tech roll. They're going to work, start working on wartime economy. Uh, they already got long range aircraft. Three militia for $6. I'll explain that in a minute. A mountain infantry and artillery and an anti aircraft artillery uh, to go in Jehol at the medium factory there. We're gonna finish the cruiser for $4 and then save a buck. These militia, <clears throat> my strategy for Japan when it comes to China is really for, at, first and foremost to take the, the six territories, one, two, three, four, five, six, that give me bonus income when I go to war with a major power. And so that's these territories right down the coast here. So as I start taking territories, I want to start building militia there to start to build up the defense of those territories. So long term, I'm going to build up as much militia as I can in China uh, to provide a defense. That's especially good because Chinese infantry don't attack really well because um, they run away and flee if they roll like an 11 or 12 when they attack. So militia is a good defense against Chinese infantry. Uh, the CCP is different. They don't run away, so, so that'll be different um, in terms of having to deal with them. But uh, that's what I'm doing uh, in terms of Japan. So let's do the tech roll first. We're going to go for a wartime economy, which I need seven or higher to get that one started. So let's see what we can get. It's a four. It's a fail. Okay. So combat moves, there's going to be some easy combat moves and there's going to be some harder ones. One of the super easy ones is one of these transports is going to scoop this marine up right there. And they're going to go one, two, and they're going to take Hainan down here from the Chinese. That's a buck. It's undefended. It's an easy take. So let's do that. Get a Japanese roundel here. We need a couple of these for this turn. So we'll put the roundel there. And we'll just put him right on top of that. Right there. Uh, and let's go ahead and move. Japanese income will go from 25. 24 to 25. China will go from 12 to 11. So, and also, I'm going to take, you know, just in case of any craziness, um, uh, you know what, I don't need to, I, I don't think that transport's at risk at all. So, um, let's do that. Then, another thing that's going to happen here is this transport here is going to scoop up these two Marines and it's the same sea zone and they're going to get dropped off here to attack Zhezong like that and then pretty much every single uh, naval ship for Japan is going to support that attack, I think. Um, and then up here, uh, <clears throat> this territory here is going to get hit by land. So this motorized infantry will move in there. And this is not crossing a river, by the way, because from the roundel to the roundel does not cross a river. So that motorized will go in like that. Uh, this tank will go in like that. And you know what? Um, I think I might leave. No, no, that tank's definitely going to go in. And I changed my mind on that. Um, I'm not really, you see this huge stack of Chinese stuff right here? 
That's three militia, a mountain infantry, two regular infantry, and a cavalry. That's the militia can't move. So a cavalry, a mountain, and two normal infantry is not a super potent attacking force. So I'm not super worried. Plus I'm building one of the militia here. And then I will take all these planes uh, down there as well. Because why not? And then I think that's it. I think I want to leave everything else back here. The only other thing I can take in there is this motorized or this uh, tank. And I think I want to leave those back. Build up a decently sized force here in Shahul. So let's do that. And um, I think in the interest of time here, um, well, no, I've got to play, I've got to roll the ships for this one because if the ships hit this guy, he doesn't get to shoot back. So I've got a ton of Navy. Let's just start with the battleships. Three bombardments at four or less. All I need is one hit, and uh, that guy can't even shoot back. And, ah, wow, I got three hits. Okay, so this guy's dead, and this becomes Japanese. And that's two more dollars. So Japan moves up two more. China moves down two more, down to nine. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. U.S. trade is going to be reduced by another one, so that's back down to 26. <clears throat> and then, I hope you guys followed that. Um, so, then, this one up here, I just, in the interest of time, I'm going to assume somebody gets a hit on that militia, so we're just going to roll the militia at two or less and see if that militia can get a hit back on the Japanese. So militia at two or less. Any misses. Okay, so I'm going to move all these planes back to Jehol, where they came from. Nice strategic location there. So all those guys move back. This guy is dead. Like that. This now becomes Japanese. Pretty prime location for the communists to hit that next turn, I think. Uh, I think we're going to start something of a seesaw here between because Japan and um, China because, you know... My strategy here for China is to defend in the mountains. I don't want to pour out of there too quickly uh, and expose myself because I can't build stuff nearly as fast as Japan can. So um, let's go ahead and do that income increase. That was another $1 for Japan and down another dollar for China. So they'll be down to 8 Right there. And I think... Was the Soviet Union at nine or eight? Uh, I don't know. I think they were at eight because that's why they China was at nine. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, let me know if I'm wrong on that. So that's it for the combat moves um, for Japan. For non-combat, um, we're going to move this sub down to here. Um, this navy has to stay here. What do I want to do with some of this? Um, I'm going to build a militia in Peking. And then I probably want to move... Probably these two infantry into there. And leave behind maybe the mountain too. I think maybe the mountain too into Peking. Like that. And then I'll build the militia there as well. Um, that naval base is also in Peking. And then that leaves me the fighters, 
uh, a light tank, a motorized, and all the stuff I'm going to build there. Um, I think that's about it for non-combat moves. I don't really think I want to do much else. I need to keep these guys on the border here just for border security. And uh, that's about it. So um, now I'm going to place units. So this is going to get pretty crowded. Uh, let me get the militia here first. Six bucks for the militia. And we're going to start building up our defensive forces here. One. And I'm only building these in the territories that I had since the start of the turn. I'm not exactly sure what the rule is, whether you can build militia in, in areas that you just took. I don't think you can. I'm not going to play it that way. If I'm wrong about that, let me know. But those are the three places that I'm going to build militia in. Uh, thinking about long term about building a factory here that will help me with the southern China war and really it's going to be the war to maintain I got to take one more territory to maximize my bonus income when I'm at war and then the war for me then shifts to keeping those territories if I have a chance opportunistically to drive into the mountains and take some stuff out I will a factory here, even a minor factory, would help me build uh, some units like maybe artillery or regular infantry or mountain infantry that I could push forward. Especially artillery. I think that would really help. Also, long term, a factory here would get, would it puts me a couple of sea zones away from uh, Philippines and the Dutch, the Netherlands East Indies. So I'm thinking about building a factory there. I almost did that this term, but decided against it. Uh, I need to place some more units here um, in Jehol, very, very crowded Jehol up here. I'm putting in artillery, an anti-aircraft artillery, which I hope makes the Soviets really nervous for their shiny planes that they're letting the Chinese communists use and a mountain infantry there as well. Really crowded, even on a 4x8 map. So that's how that looks. Move this guy down to here. Get a little bit more room there. So that's how that looks. And then over here, uh, so I paid all this, I paid this, and I paid that. This is four bucks, so that completes my cruiser. So he gets completed. So I will place him. Doesn't really matter, that shipyard right there. So there's another cruiser. Um, that's four cruisers for Japan. So, collecting income, I already adjusted for trade, so that's another $27 that Japan will get. Add to the buck that they save, so they'll have $28 to spend next turn, which is pretty good. $25.67 plus one that they saved is $28. What'd you guys think? Pretty uh, significant turn, turn for Japan. I uh, don't think they achieved any of their victory conditions. Um, nope, they're well on their way. I mean, they're doing everything they can to get to 50 IPPs, and that's taking those high value uh, Chinese territories. Um, it's helping them get there. Um, but uh, yeah, they need money to fuel their war machine. And they're definitely taking steps in that direction. Uh, here's a little bit different perspective on uh, how things sit for Japan right now in this game. Uh, KMT probably need to think about how they're going to stop this. Can they do some counterattacks? Can they do some counterattacks that make sense and don't make things worse for them in the short term is a big question. Could they hit these Marines here? 
Could they hit these two infantry and militia there? They could hit them. They got a cavalry here. If you could take out two marines, that might be worth something. Um, but uh, Japan's got so much stuff up here. A lot of that stuff can get on these transports and be moved down here if necessary. Where Japan's really light is they don't have anything back here uh, to bring in uh, to back any of this stuff up. So uh, China's got to think really hard about that. So that is uh, January 1938 for Japan. Uh, and oh, by the way, there were no... I don't think they need to roll for any Imperial Guards because Japan didn't lose any units this turn. Uh, I did roll. For, I did a video where I, I forgot to roll for those last turn. And I did a video, uh, but I didn't make any, so I'm not even going to post. I didn't make any of those rolls, so I'm not going to post any. Uh, but just wanted to keep that in mind and let you know. All right, Admiral Seabass signing off.